what's going on folks i want to show you how you will be removing your blower motor from off of your furnace just in case for some reason it was to go bad the first thing you're going to have to do pretty much is turn off your furnace you want to go ahead and disconnect all the power that's going to your furnace pretty much if you can see right here what i'm looking at this is your blower motor so inside of your furnace normally your blower motor is going to be at the bottom of your furnace compartment like this is your control board right here and that's your big blower board that's up underneath there now the first thing you're going to want to do first of all a lot of them you have to actually remove this control board out the way normally you can kind of remove the control board without disconnecting any of your wires yet so what you want to do pretty much is look around and this one right here if i look up here there's a couple screws that's holding this control board on so when I, I already loosened them up so when I come here I'm just removing you see there's a screw right here that that piece came off there's another screw over here that I'll be removing and once I remove so now there's another screw up here I got this furnace turned on its back pretty much so you can see what I'm doing pretty good okay yeah so I now have this other screw out of here next thing i'm going to be doing is kind of moving this out the way so yeah there's two screws that i removed from my power control board like i said this furnace is laying down so you will be looking at yours in your house you'll be moving from up here like in this spot right here where you'll be removing your screws from and down here is where your blower motor is at so once you remove those screws normally you could just move this out the way it still will be connected to your blower motor but you can kind of just set it aside somewhere not putting a lot of pressure on your the wires and once you got your your um your control board out the way you'll be able to look right here and normally you'll have some of them you'll have like a couple of screws right here like three screws you got to take out and this one has three screws on here then also you'll have normally a screw that's right over here in the side right here let me get you a good look at that So I'm looking from the bottom. So if you see right here on the side right there, there's some holes. You'll have a screw normally that's there. And also you'll have one on the other side that's in the same position right there. So some of them only have two screws. One on this side and one on that side in the front. This one happened to have three other screws in it that was in the top up here. So you take those three screws out of it and once you take those screws out what you'll be able to do then is just pretty much come to your whole blower and it kind of slides up and out just like that see i was able to slide it up and out now i have my whole blower motor is out of course it's still connected to my control board so you want to be careful with that you may have to disconnect a couple of wires from your control board to separate it out but for this one right here since we're going to be replacing it what i'm going to do is just pretty much cut these wires right here from off of this motor i'm going to leave enough space on it so i can connect the other one onto here so i'm going to be connecting these wires i have a black a white a red and a blue also what you want to do is note on your control board where these wires go at that way when you reconnect it again you'll know where to put the wires back at so go ahead and note like here i see the red the blue the black and over here is the white so you might want to do a diagram or take a picture of your control board where these wires plug in at that way you'll know where to put them back at so like i said so since i'm going to be um taking this motor out of here i'm gonna go ahead and cut these wires right here so i can pretty much separate this from my control board that way i don't have to worry about having that like i said but when you're doing your control board you may have other wires that you got to disconnect somewhere to remove your control board from out of your furnace and some may actually stay inside of your furnace itself so you just have to disconnect the wires so you can get your motor out i'm gonna cut this right now and show you now how to get this motor itself out of your this whole housing part of it normally when your um your uh, motor goes bad you don't have to replace this whole snail looking part all you're going to be doing is changing out this motor right here with another one and putting this part back into your furnace 
All right, so now that you pretty much got your motor completely disconnected, what you want to do now is turn it over to this side right here, and what you'll see is a little screw right here. You want to basically loosen up this, you want to loosen up this screw that's right here, and this screw is going to allow this shaft pretty much to come through and take your motor out once you disconnect the screws on the other side. I'm going to show you that. So what you want to do is maybe have a pair of pliers. Alright, so once you come to the back, if you have like a little screw right here, you just kind of want to take like a little wrench or something like that and loosen up that screw. Once you have that screw loose, what you want to do next is go and take like a pair of pliers. If you look at your shaft, like a flat part of it, hold it with your pliers and go ahead and spin your fan in the inside. This is just loosening it up on here. So once you have it loose like that, now what you need to do is turn it over to the other side over here. And if you can see, you'll have three screws right here. Some may have more that you need to go ahead and take out. All right, so basically I'm coming back here now and taking out these three screws that's on the back right here. This is your mount, so when you get a new motor, you may have the mount on it, but a lot of times you won't, so you're gonna to need to reuse this same mount right here. Just taking out these three screws. Okay, so once I got those screws out, and we loosen this other side, see, now I'll be able to basically just pull this motor off of here. And once I have that off, here's your capacitor. If you're putting a new motor on there, you're, you're going to want to go ahead and just get you a new capacitor right here to put onto your new motor. So all you got to do is just take out this capacitor. Kind of be careful with them. Sometimes they can have a charge left in them. But you just want to basically take off that capacitor. It just had, and you have a ground wire that's here also that you're going to have to remove that's just on that little screw. All right, so what I'm doing now is just disconnecting this capacitor. Just has a couple screws on it. Like I said, when you get your new motor, first of all, make sure you get the correct size by looking at the specs that's on your furnace to know what size motor that you need as well as the capacitor that you're going to need to go with your new motor. This is the capacitor that goes to this motor right here pretty much. So once I have all this off, what I need to do now is I'm going to need to remove this mount. See this mount that goes on here? This mount I'm going to need to put onto my new motor. So this one's pretty simple. It just has like a, a screw right here. So all I'm gonna do, I need to hold the other side. This one's spinning on the other side. So I just grab a wrench. So I have that off. Now that I have that, you kind of just want to stretch this open. And then you should be able just to slide. Hold on, let me make sure there's no more screws in here. Yeah. So then you kind of just want to, don't bend it. See how I did? You just kind of want to stretch it open like that. So then when you get your new motor, you can put this one around your new motor. Sometimes these fans can get real dirty and you may need to clean it off because that'll stop your efficiency if it's all covered with dirt and everything. This one looks pretty clean, so I'll be fine. So also remember if this comes out, which way that it went in. See how you have one side like this? Remember that the, the shaft is gonna come up through this side where you have that screw at right there. So that's where the shaft comes up at. And also you kind of want to remember which way it came out of your housing itself. Some of them it may not matter, some it may. So just pay attention to which side, say this part was inside of your, your housing. And once you do that, you would take your new motor. You would take your new motor. These are kind of sharp too. So you want to be careful when you're touching on this because these things real cut you pretty much. So if I'll be really careful with this, but you want to take your new motor and you would want to hold up your fan. And basically once you have your mount, of course, 
or until your new motor, you're going to want to hold up your fan, stick it back through pretty much, and do the reverse process. And once you get everything back in, then you can go ahead and reconnect your wires. Like I said, some of your fans may come with, with new wires, and if, if that's the case, all you got to do is just run it back through your run it back through your opening which on this one it came through right here run it back through wherever it came actually no it came in over here and you can plug them back up where they was at but if it doesn't have new wires that come with it then what you'll have to do is just cut the ends off of the old ones pretty much and splice it into the other ones now, let me show you one more thing so when you get this all back together again when you're ready to reinstall it back into the furnace let me show you how it goes in there. ready to install it back in here you'll notice right here if you look down in there it's like a little lip that sits out there's a little lip so at the end of your your uh, the end of your housing it's like a little mouth in that so what you're going to want to do is kind of slide it into that little lip you see these two ends right here one here and one here you're going to want to slide those over into that little lip kind of want to angle it and once you get it in like that now you can just let it sit all the way back down in there it'll be sturdy like that pretty much then you'll put your screws back in and you'll be good to go also don't forget like i said you got your capacitor reconnect your capacitor back up and you should be good yeah so once again this is how you would be removing your blower motor from out of your furnace itself like I said, you would take the screws out of it, two screws on the side, probably a few in the front, remove your control board, then you just want to pick up on it. Like I said, there's little lips back there that this piece and this piece is going to slide into. Let me show you that. Now, some people have problems with that. So if you see right here, those two little lips, one, it sticks out in here. You're going to want to make sure that you slide this in and that in behind those two little lips right here that way it'll slide back in there and set itself up pretty much all right folks once again this is how you'll be changing out your blower motor on your furnace just in case for some reason it was to go bad all right please check out our other helpful videos please like subscribe and share thanks